Until the quake struck, Paolo lived here in Osopo with his parents, his two older sisters, and their dog. This is, or was, Paolo's house. His father, his sisters, and the dog all got out when it collapsed, but Paolo and his mother didn't. The frantic father got the soldiers to dig for them, and now, after hours of working on the rubble, they've heard a sound. It's Paolo. Any earthquake looks like every other earthquake. But in this case, I happened to see this one scene where they were trying to get this little boy out. And quite frankly, in a way, I got fascinated by it and took a risk. Took a risk by deciding that instead of doing the safe thing and covering the white charts, the, the, the rubble clearing, and etc., I would stick with this, the drama of this one kid. The soldiers promise him a ride in a helicopter when they get him out. The trouble is that they don't know how. All they have is their hands, a cheap saw, and four bits worth of rope to do the job with. Then help arrives, a pneumatic tool. The soldiers use it to try and pry away the rafter that holds Paolo's head just a fraction of an inch. But still Paolo can't budge, and now his voice can no longer be heard. It's now three hours since Paolo was first found. And now suddenly, patience and effort pay off. Watching that kid being pulled out, out of this rubble, by his legs like a newborn. My God, that was an experience. You know? And even if I had missed the story, it would have been wor well worthwhile. I would have, you know, I thought I hadn't wasted my day because it was wonderful. And so Paolo's off to a new life, and maybe he'll even get that helicopter ride the soldiers promised him. Joe Schlesinger, CBC News, Osopo, Italy.